Hi, I'm Arindam Ghosh and I do welcome you to my seventh lecture on Marxism and uh, today I will talk about Frankfurt School. As I've already discussed with you, I have uh, discussed with you the classical principles of Marxism. I've introduced you with the uh, premises of classical Marxism like historical materialism, dialectical materialism. I have also discussed with you the initiation of the Western Marxism in the hands of George Lucas and introduced you the conception of the epic theatre uh, of Bartold Brecht in the previous lecture. Today I will discuss another very important school of Marxist criticism known as the Frankfurt School. Many called it as the school of the critical theory, quote unquote, and they are very important figures if we uh, actually see them. Uh, uh, from the uh, perspective of the literary and cultural studies. So uh, actually many people also call them the new left in the 1960s. Uh, they are known as the exponents and the propounders of the Frankfurt School. This is actually a name given to the members of the Institute for Social Research which founded in Frankfurt in 1923. But they emigrated to New York due to the political unrest in Germany in 1933 because uh, the very fascist and oppressive government of Germany actually uh, treated them as uh, the people who was working against the state. And due to the political turmoil, they have emigrated the Institute of the so for Social Research in, uh, from Frankfurt to, uh, uh, to America, New York. Some of the thinkers are T. W. Adorno, Fyodor Adorno, philosopher, sociologist, musicologist, of course, Walter Benjamin, another very important thinker, Herbert Mott Matthews, philosopher, Max Horkheimer, and of course, uh, uh, Urgen Habermas. They are some of the exponents and uh, uh, propounders of the Frankfurt School. So, they have also been termed as critical theorists. Why? Because uh, they begin to see uh, the various social and the cultural practices through the lens of the critical theory. And this uh, particular circle, the Frankfurt circle, has witnessed the rise of the Stalinist Russia and its perversion of the Marxist theory the rise of the Italian fascism in the hands of the Benito Mussolini, of the Nazism and the Holocaust, the atomic bomb, the Cold War, the hegemony of the America. So they have thought uh, of rethinking the Marxism in a completely different cultural context, in a dark time, in a different way. And hence, uh, this, this particular school of the Frankfurt theorist, also known as the cultural theorists. So here they are, they established their institution, that's the institution in 1923. Initially it was funded by Felix Well, a young Marxist thinker, but later it moved to New York in 1933 due to extreme political unrest in the Germany as I have already mentioned. So the founding of the institute actually marked the beginning of a current of Marxism divorced from the organized working class and communist parties, which over the decades merged with the bourgeois ideology. So according to this uh, form of school, they, they are actually basically academic Marxian. They have seen Marxism from a very academic angle. Uh, they do not have the prerogative or the baggage of employing these Marxist theories uh, in the political arena and uh, in the political battlefields. This is the Institute for Social Research, Frankfurt, Main Germany. So what are the basic principles of uh, the critical theory? In Traditional and Critical Theory, it's a book uh, published by Max Horkheimer in 1937. Horkheimer, one of the exponents of Frankfurt School, defined critical theory as a social critic meant to affect sociologic change and realize the intellectual emancipation. So it aims for basically a kind of intellectual emancipation by way of enlightenment that is not dogmatic in its assumption. So 
in the sense it is actually uh, it do not have its own cultural or political baggage uh, uh, to support the stalinism in russia or to support the soviet view of the marxism the purpose of the critical theory is to analyze the true significance of the ruling understandings that is the dominant ideology generated by the bourgeois society by showing that the dominant ideology misrepresents how human relations occur in the real world and how such misrepresentations function to justify and legitimate the domination of the people by the capitalism so critical theory will analyze these form of dominant ideologies and expose these dominant ideologies by means of their academic understanding of marxist praxis in the praxis of the cultural hegemony the dominant ideology is a ruling class narrative ruling class story which explains what is occurring in the society as the norm so the task of the frankfurt school was essentially sociological in nature through the means of sociological analysis and interpretation of the areas of social relation that marx did not discuss in the 19th century context especially in the base and superstructure aspects of the capitalist society they will their main aim was to find out these lacunas uh, inside the marxist theories and they try to expose this dominant ideologies of the bourgeois people horkheimer opposed critical theory to the traditional theory where in the word theory is applied in the positivistic sense of scientism he said that various uh, scientific methods uh, are uh, uh, are are not valid in case of dealing these uh, sociological principles because uh, not not all scientific theories can be applied in actual society so for horkheimer the methods of investigation applicable to the social sciences cannot imitate the scientific method applicable to the natural sciences because in that way he said the theoretical approaches of the positivism and pragmatism of the neo kantism and phenomenology fail to surpass the ideological constraints that restricted their application to the social science because social science sometime resist the logico mathematical prejudice that separates theory from the actual life in actual life theory not always a uh, scientific theory especially is not always uh, can be applied very smoothly and hence they said uh, that uh, uh, they have to create this field of the critical theory which uh, uh, will always we will we, we'll talk about the actual real world so why there lies the difference between the traditional theory and critical theory what is the difference between the traditional theory and critical theory while traditional theory will be essentially objective in nature immutable they are universal and eternal for example uh, uh, the law of uh, gravity by propounded by isaac newton uh, for example the theory of uh, darwin essentially eternal critical theory te kono eternal law bole hoy na karon social science er law shobshomoy always subjective changeable and essentially anti foundational in nature so while traditional theory talks about objectivity critical theory will essentially be subjective nijer opinion er upor nirbhorshil theorist er opinion er upor nirbhorshil while traditional theory will be immutable unchangeable critical theory will be essentially be changeable anti foundational in nature this while the traditional theory talks about empiricism that is a uh, theory is based on experience of the researcher it is essentially normative in nature based on the opinion and value system critical theory is based on value added because it, it is essentially subjective in nature and hence value added it is value free because it is objective in nature in sociological theory said the critical theorist that objective theory is not possible so it is essentially it will understand the underlying system the traditional theory will explain while traditional theory is essentially 
rationalist in nature critical theory is reflectivist in nature so here are uh, here we can uh, uh, distinguish some of the uh, characteristic with uh, categorically uh, some of the characteristic traits of the traditional theory and the critical theory so uh, what's the basic foundational thought of critical theory they for the first time raise the question how come capitalism hasn't yet collapsed why capitalism is still working and working great why because according to marx predicted long ago that from the innate contradictions of the capitalism uh, the proletarian revolution will occur and the bourgeois will be expelled from the society the society will be essentially classless because capitalism creates a system of exploitation suppression oppression and corruption but why still capitalism survive why hasn't been why why hasn't capitalism collapsed yet frankfurt school said that the idea that the mass media and systems of cultural production have done a great deal to prevent the collapse of capitalism predicted by marx was developed by the theorist of the cultural school marx when lived at a time when uh, these cultural production পণ্য বিশেষ করে সাংস্কৃতিক পণ্য সেটা থিয়েটার হোক লিটারেচার হোক কলগেট মাজন হোক বা তোমাদের ফেসবুক হোক ইনস্টাগ্রাম হোক অল দিস ফর্মস অফ সোশ্যাল মিডিয়া এইগুলো মার্কসের সময়কার ক্যাপিটালিজম তৈরি করেনি সো মার্কস ইন দ্যাট সেন্স দ্য রেভলিউশন অফ দ্য টেকনোলজি he saw the revolution of industrial revolution which occurred from 1760s to 1780s but he hasn't seen this form of technological revolution the revolution in the area of the ICT information and communication technology he uh, uh, failed to see this uh, historical uh, 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 evolution of technological revolution so and he haven't seen the rise of the cultural production so according to the frankfurt theories these various forms of cultural production by the media houses prevent the collapse of the capitalism so this group of intellectuals were active from the inception of the frankfurt's uh, institute of social research in 1923 and their work has been highly influential in marxist approaches to culture in capitalist societies so the school uh, has developed an account of the culture industry this word has been uh, coined by p w adorno theodore adorno very important word that remember culture industry and the uh, and the main uh, work of the frankfurt school is actually concentrates on this critique of the culture industry what is culture industry they use this word to call attention to the industrialization and commercialization of the culture under capitalist relations of production for example uh amader daily life e ekta je kono sadharon je kono ekta object jodi amra create kori shetake essentially ekta industry ke create korte hobe shetake essentially ekta ekta kono brand ke create korte hobe brand ke create korlei tar brand value barbe সেটা দাঁতের মাজনই হোক আমাদের ডেলি ব্যবহারের সাধারণ একটা সোপই হোক ডেটল বার করলে তবেই সেটা আমরা ইউজ করব অন্য কোনো সাধারণ লোক সেটা যদি তাদের বাড়িতে তৈরি করে আমরা ইউজ করব না সো এই যে কালচার ইন্ডাস্ট্রি যে ক্রিয়েট করা একটা প্রোডাক্ট অ্যান্ড কালচার ইন্ডাস্ট্রি মিনস অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইন্ডাস্ট্রিয়ালাইজেশন অ্যান্ড কমার্সিয়ালাইজেশন অফ দ্য কালচার আন্ডার দ্য ক্যাপিটালিস্ট রিলেশনস অফ প্রোডাকশন during the 1930s the frankfurt school developed a critical approach to the cultural and communication studies combining the political economy textual analysis and analysis of the social and the ideological effects so 1930s a frankfurt school jeta bar korar chesta korlo seta hocche a media studies cultural and communication studies by combining various methods at the same time it will be a study of the various texts of the social science and popular culture it will eventually involve political economy without political economy am analyze korte parbo na 
and definitely the ideological effects of commercialization and industrialization of the product. So they coined the term culture industry to signify the process of the industrialization of the mass produced culture and the commercial imperatives that drove the system. Uh, she is a sponsor. She is a sponsor. She is a sponsor. She is a sponsor. Naturally, she is a sponsor. 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 She in a very subterranean way. This is a quotation of Herbert Marcus, another very famous proponent of the Frankfurt School uh, from his famous book, The One Dimensional Man. We will discuss it later on. In this book, he says that the means of communication, means of communication, I mean, the I mean, the communicate kori. The irresistible output of the entertainment and information industry carry with them prescribed attitudes and habits, certain intellectual and emotional reactions which bounds the consumer. It contains certain prescribed attitudes and habit. Agathe prescribed for the habit attitude. Etikamaki follow kota. The product is indoctrinate and manipulates. It indoctrinates you from your perceived ideologies tomar je nijer adarsho tomar je nijer vision and opinion about the society about the culture theke doctrine bole she doctrine ke theke tomake indoctrinate korche ekhan theke tomake shori anche ke shori anche the culture industry and it manipulates your brain they promote a false consciousness the term which has been created by karl marx himself and uh, used uh, 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 in a different context by Antonio Gramsci, it builds a false co consciousness. Class consciousness, when your consciousness, uh, your consciousness about your class, to me, con particular social context, you know, Sveni Chetona, she shampoo opinion, she can take it on a shuri and a mood, and what to make a babache, it to me, one at the unknown context, you know, and it injects a form of false consciousness inside your mind which is immune against the falsehood and thus emerges a pattern of the one dimensional thought so our multivalent multi-dimensional thought ke nashto korche emang toma ke akta ak mukhi in manu se boli nato korche the culture industry jeva be bhabde shikhatche tu ishe bhabde bhabcho ajge star anam de News broadcasting agency, the news presenter, Tomaki Jihabe, Shongbat the Dakabe, to be shape Habe, Shongbat the Dekte Baddocho, Tomar Nijaje, Buddhi intelligence brain, Shrekati to me Dekchona, and hence you are constantly transforming yourself into a one dimensional man, attack Mukimanu Shepunotoche, Tomar Nokichu, Chinta Havna or Komota Nostoche. To me, Jacob, social context, the care, Prithok Korea, Uno Prithitoka Nijolegache, virtual world. To me, Tomar, Char Pasher, the Prithibi, the poverty stricken Prithibi, Jacane Daridro, Jacane, Jacane, Shomaji injustice, Boyan Korabe Gorche, Shekan Taka Nie, Tomake, Amun at a fashion world in Egache, Amun at a superficial artificial world in Egache, Jacan to me, Char Pashake, addict the Bachanavik Chai Chorina. Etayoche, the main purpose of the culture industry, propounded long ago in the 1960s by some of the greatest thinkers of the Western Marxism, T.W. Adorno, Max Horkheimer, Herbert Marcus, Jurgen Habermas, and Walter M. Benjamin. So, they for the first time emphasized that how this culture industry, how the media houses, how this very, they, they are controlling the various means of the communication and hence creating a one-dimensional man from you. So according to them, pop culture is equal to brainwashing. Pop culture, popular culture, they have seen popular culture in a very narrow sense, though I have uh, a different opinion regarding it. Uh, 
I do not personally think that pop culture always uh, brainwashes uh, people. Sometimes it also creates uh, pockets of resistance. On actually, popular culture, a uh, 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 grand narrative, whether it uh, be it government, whether it be it a religious institution, on a certain challenge, which we have, a popular cultural institution, gulo. Kintu. Uh, uh, Frankfurt School essentially pop culture care as machineries of washing the brains, as controlling the people through their way of uh, uh, succulent and superficial communication. So, coming back to it, they said that through radio, TV, movies, and various forms of popular music, especially like jazz, Adorno was a musicologist, he was a musician, a classical musician. He was a, a professional pianist. He hated jazz. Jibonair shomosh to khamota diye jazz ke greena kore chen. Mungole chen various uh, popular uh, uh, programs in TV, television, radio, movies and various other forms of popular music like jazz, the expanding culture industries were disseminating the ruling class ideologies with greater effect than Marx could have ever envisaged because Marx never have seen such a cultural revolution, such technological revolution in his whole life. The further development of the consumer society in the 20th century powerfully aided the process of the working class incorporation in promoting new myths of the classness and wedded the working class even more tightly to the acquisitive and property owning beliefs. So according to them, this form of consumerism, consumerist culture create kora, working class care are powerfully colonized culture. So they, the Frankfurt School, were very much dismissive of the popular culture. They uh, criticized the cultural culture industry. So indictment of culture industry uh, can be found in the Frankfurt School very much. The Frankfurt School, uh, they are uh, highly dismissive of the popular culture because they see cultural industry and the products that it churns out as being little more than propaganda for capitalism. And this approach leads Adorno in particular to make some uh, damning indictments of popular culture. He said that the listeners of the popular music are infantile and fans of the Jitterberg dance craze were described as retarded, mentally retarded. But Adorno has his own opinion. He said that uh, you should spend your leisure time uh, in equipping yourself. You should equip yourself in your leisure time. You should learn some classical music or you should spend uh, uh, your leisure time uh, uh, in analyzing yourself, uh, knowing, uh, reading some great books from classical history, and he said that these various forms of uh, dancing, which described as convulsive aspects reminiscent of Saint Vitus' dance, or the reflexes of the mutilated animals, he said that uh, this form of body popping that uh, that popular culture promotes, these things absolutely destroys our uh, classical sense of the culture. In, and it absolutely destroys our mental ability to think. And he says this: these are the various uh, bad and evil effects of culture industry. So he actually coined a term called standardization. He said that the very fact that popular culture is neither difficult nor demanding, and that it offers simple and direct pleasures, contributes to his contributes to its complicity in the uh, capitalist ideology. So, according to Adorno, uh, popular culture is so much demanding and popular because it offers simple and direct pleasures. That is, we don't have to uh, employ our brain much uh, in order to decipher a popular music. We don't have to learn the, uh, 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 the intricate and the complex uh, musical code while uh, 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 which is actually a prerequisite in listening to the classical music, which is not a prerequisite uh, in listening to the popular culture. 
সো এই ট্রেনিংটা যেটা ক্লাসিক্যাল মিউজিক বা ক্লাসিক্যাল ফর্ম অফ আর্ট রিসিভার করতে দরকার সেটা এই পপুলার মিউজিকের আগে না অ্যান্ড অ্যাকর্ডিং টু অ্যাডোর নো উই ক্রেভ স্ট্যান্ডার্ডাইজ কালচারাল প্রোডাক্টস বিকজ দে সিম টু ভ্যালিডেট লাইভস দ্যাট আর দেম সেলভস স্ট্যান্ডার্ডাইজ সো দিজ লাইভস অ্যাকচুয়ালি ক্রিয়েটস ইটস ওন স্ট্যান্ডার্ড so standardization is a term created by adorno referring to the standard created by the popular culture so at work we are alienated by dull and repetitive and undemanding tasks but this alienating effect is relieved by the dull repetitive and undeniable uh, and undemanding cultural products like the pop songs and the cultural pursuits like dancing etc so according to adorno the standard this form of standardization has been created by the simple and direct pleasure giving machinery like uh, there are the pop music so these are some of the examples of the mass culture be it uh, facebook memes uh, be it uh, uh, harry potter movies or twilight movies uh, perhaps uh, or jurassic park movies so uh, these things uh, will be termed by adorno as mass culture popular culture and will completely be denigrated by him uh, in a very negative language so frankfurt school what the frankfurt school said some of the important key points one it destroys uh, enlightenment self destruction of the enlightenment it uh, they criticize consumerism they criticize the monopoly capitalism they said that through this consumerist and a capitalist society they have actually created a totally administered society this form of uh, uh, consumerism actually creates a uh, mass persuasion and manipulation and it actually introduced the concept of the controlled gratification ami koto ta gratified hobo koto ta tushto hobo seta amake ei various mass cultural form ei popular cultural form guli amake bole debe and he said the music i don't know said the music of the soul is also the music of the salesmanship kemon kore bikri korte hobe ei dhoron music ke shei khub bhalo kore jane television and various uh, uh, consumerist society ebong shei bhabei music of the soul ke tara music of the salesmanship e transform koreche of the tv by the tv for the people of the tip of the people by the people for the people er bodole ei rokom bhabe subverted ekta form ke dekhano hoyeche so ei bhabei kintu frankfurt school media houses and popular culture ke culture industry ke bhoyongkor bhabe criticize korar chesta koreche so mass culture and communications what they do they are very important agents of the socialization what is socialization socialization is actually interacting the human agents with society they stand in the center of the leisure activity manusher je barti shomoy seta je classical music ba onnanno important activity te invest korbe seta korte na diye tader culture ke completely subvert koreche ei mass culture and communications and it should be seen as a major institutions of contemporary societies with a variety of economic political and cultural and social effects the mass media has such a tremendous impact on the society that it created a multivalent impact be it in the economic zone political zone cultural zone or the societal zone and becomes an instrument for control and domination so culture industries are a form of the integration of the working class into the capitalist society very important it said that it's a weapon of brainwashing and hence uh, it's actually uh, uh, promotes the process of the integration of the working class into the capitalist societies culture industries and consumer societies are stabilizing the contemporary capitalism and accordingly sought new strategies for political change so culture industry actually created new vistas new strategies for the political change and it promotes the notion of the liberal democracy in such a way that uh, 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 that liberal democracy actually appears as the greatest boon of the 20th century while basically it is an extension of the capitalism itself 
so agencies of uh, so the frankfurt school said that various uh, agencies of political transformation uh, who actually promotes political emancipation uh, have been uh, 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 manipulated by various forms of cultural industries and consumer societies and they also said the system of cultural production dominated by film radio broadcasting television newspaper magazines was controlled by advertising and commercial imperatives and hence this various forms of cultural production they actually reflect the viewpoint of these advertisers they actually reflect the viewpoints of the capitalist society so cultural production this term is very important this term has been coined by the frankfurt school and they have related this term as the product of the cultural industries and this served to create subservience to the system of the consumer capitalism through this way consumer capitalism is actually operating so the form of the capitalism uh, at the time of marx were completely being changed at the time of uh, 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 the frankfurt school so they have talked about the very uh, 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 disparaging effect of the culture industries in the minds of the working class people and they said that technology actually creates this major form of production it's actually a formative mode of the social organization and control and through this uh, they are creating uh, and perpetuating the social relationships technology is a very important tool for control and domination on the part of this neo capitalist society this is theodor w adorno one of the greatest exponents of the frankfurt school born in 93 died in 1969 german philosopher sociologist psychologist musicologist and composer and known as uh, known for his uh, 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 critical theory of society so he wrote a famous book uh, with max horkheimer the name of the book is please do always remember dialectic of enlightenment published in 1947 he wrote also other two books like minima moralia and negative dialectics published in 1966 they strongly they have strongly influenced the european left so uh, adorno also was famously published aesthetic theory uh, which he dedicated to samuel beckett and he uh, actually uh, here talked about that how uh, modern art attempts to revoke the fatal separation of the feeling and understanding long demanded by the history of the philosophy this particular book can be treated as a bible of the frankfurt school known as the dialectic of enlightenment published in 1947 it's a very important book written jointly by uh, max horkheimer and theodor adorno it explores the socio psychological status quo that had been responsible for what the frankfurt school considered the failure of the age of enlightenment for adorno and horkheimer state intervention in the economy had effectively abolished the tension in capitalism between the relations of the production and the material productive forces of society a tension which according to the traditional critical theory constituted the primary contradiction within capitalism the market as an unconscious mechanism for the distribution of goods had been replaced by centralized planning so according to uh, these thinkers marx ki dekhechilo marx dekhechilo ei je relations of production and the forces of pro- forces of production especially been controlled by the capitalist societies by the capitalist people and they are exploiting the working class people directly kintu dialectic of enlightenment adorno ebong horkheimer bollo ekhon kar situation the present situation is completely different here the social intervention of the state in controlling these means and the forces of production is always there society sob shomoy society modde governance sob shomoy intervene korche state intervene korche rashtra dukche kintu ta shotteo exploitation hocche keno because 
it is a market economy and bazar arthniti and here market is basically controlling everything market here becomes the synonymous for the state ekhane bazari rashtra hoye uthe ei tar kotha dialectic of enlightenment ke bollo horkheimer and uh, theodore adorno they for the they, for the first time try to uh, uh, see marxism from completely a change perspective ei poribortito paristhitite marxism ke notun bhabe notun lens e dekhar chesta ei frankfurt school bol so according to uh, uh, these frankfurt school there are certain key observations that they have led in the dialectics of the dialectic of the enlightenment they said the problems posed by the rise of fascism with the demise of the liberal state and the market together with the failure of a social revolution to materialize its way constitute the theoretical and historical perspective that frames the overall argument of the book they said myth is already enlightenment and enlightenment reverts back to mythology so they said that the my the present situation actually the conception of the enlightenment that the present uh, situation promotes is actually a product of mythology so horkheimer and adorno believe that in the process of the enlightenment modern philosophy had become over rationalized and an instrument of the technocracy the author as i've said coined the term culture industry arguing that in a capitalist society mass culture is akin to a factory producing standardized cultural goods films radio programs magazines they are all product of the culture industries and these homogenized cultural products are used to manipulate mass society into docility and passivity why homogenized why not heterogeneous because it only represents opinion of the capitalist society তাদের বক্তব্যই শুধুমাত্র এখানে ক্রিস্টালাইজ ফর্মে রয়েছে অন্য মাল্টিভ্যালেন্ট অনেক বক্তব্য যেটা হেটেরোজেনাইটিকে প্রভাব ইন্ডিয়া ইজ এ হেটেরোজেনিয়াস কান্ট্রি উইথ ভেরিয়াস মাল্টিপল সেক্স অ্যান্ড ক্রিডস অ্যান্ড রিলিজিয়াস কমিউনিটিজ লিভিং ইন দিস ডাইভার্সিফায়েড স্টেট সেটা হচ্ছে না ইটস ওনলি ইট ইট ওনলি রিপ্রেজেন্টস দ্য হোমোজেনাইজ ভয়েস সো উইথ দ্য ইন্ট্রোডাকশন অফ দ্য রেডিও আ মাস মিডিয়াম no longer permits its listener any mechanism of reply as was in the case of the telephone telephone act a reply deva jay act a uttor deva jay kintu radio te kono dhoroner uttor deya jana tomake je shonano hobe tai tumi shunbe remember this is a theory propounded by uh, tw adorno in the 1960s tar pore kintu onek poriborton eshe radio er moddhe tumi tomar gaan ki shunbe tumi request korte parte porobortikale fm e এমনকি এখন মেকানিজমটা কমপ্লিটলি চেঞ্জ হয়ে গিয়ে ইউটিউবের মতো একটা ফোরাম তৈরি হয়েছে সেখানে ইটস অ্যান ইন্টারঅ্যাক্টিভ মিডিয়াম সেখানে তুমি কমেন্ট করতে পারো তুমি নিজে কন্টেন্ট ক্রিয়েট করতে পারো ইউ আর দ্য লিসেনার ইউ আর দ্য ভিজুয়ালাইজার অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম ইউ ক্যান অলসো ক্রিয়েট ইউর ওন কন্টেন্ট তুমি ডাইরেক্টলি মিডিয়ামে পার্টিসিপেট করছো মানে এই পার্টিকুলার মিডিয়াম এখন যে রাইজ অফ দ্য সোশ্যাল মিডিয়া অ্যান্ড ভেরিয়াস আদার ফর্মস অফ মিডিয়ামস মাস মিডিয়ামস এইগুলো দেখে অ্যাডোগ্ন কি বলতো সেটা কিন্তু একটা সত্যি বড় প্রশ্ন সো অ্যাডোর্ন বলছে ইনস্টেড লিসেনার্স আর নট সাবজেক্টস এনি মোর বাট প্যাসিভ রিসেপ্টাকলস নাও মিডি দ্য সাবজেক্টস অফ দ্য লিসেনার্স আর নো মোর প্যাসিভ রিসেপ্টাকলস দে আর অ্যাকচুয়ালি পার্টিসিপেটিং ইনসাইড দ্য প্রোডাক্ট সেটা কিন্তু আরও ডেঞ্জারাস তুমি পার্টিসিপেট করছো তুমি সম্মতি দিচ্ছ তুমি এই কালচার ইন্ডাস্ট্রির পার্ট হয়ে উঠছো হয়তো অ্যাডোর্ন এটাই বলতো সো it exposed in authoritarian fashion the same programs put out by the different stations so akun beche thakle i don't know age various social media social media trials uh, uh, media shamne ekjon lokke uh, negatively portray kora tar phole tar 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 samaj jibone take eta villainous character e porinoto howa ei gulo dekhle i don't know je ki bolto ami shotti jani na So I don't say that Marx's failure to see this arose because of his failure to take culture seriously. Marx never had seen or take culture seriously. And this is Marx's reply. Uh, this is from Introducing Marxism, a graphic guide by Rupert Woodfin. I am highly recommending this book. It's a great book for understanding the basic principles of Marxism in a very simplified manner. 
So Mark says, I could hardly be expected to have to have foreseen the massive growth of the media and popular culture industry. Even our media paper marks who be doshed to parina. Because Karl Marx is showing a certain huge explosion of the uh, of culture in various media, uh, be it in radio or in other media. How many Karl Marx have never seen the birth of the television, uh, let alone the birth of the social media? For uh, Marx, the culture report emphasizes their jayona. Take a chance. मैं Uh, T.W. I don't know another uh, other exponents of Frankfurt School said that uh, essentially it's a monolithic interpretation. Essentially, the mass media always controls the people. It's not always uh, works that way. So uh, this is the theory of the pseudo individualization propounded by Adorno. According to him, a culture industry suggests that society perpetuates in a very capitalist nature and promotes. False needs where material goods maybe in some way brings us happiness. So within this theory, I don't know addresses that the, there occurs the pseudo individualization, which deceives individuals into believing that they in some way have choices which they don't have. And I don't know suggests that in reality, eternal sameness is disguised through varying product design. You are buying almost the same phone. Of uh, Android versions, different Android versions, but you are compelled to buy the same phone. Aki ra kum dekte phone structure. You are buying the same clock, you are buying the same pen drive. Everything is same. Aki dinish bar bar toh maake bikri kore. Aki niyud bisho shomayer kore the phone will wane away. It will uh, again replaced by another same looking phone. It follows uh, by creating an atmosphere of the eternal sameness, which creates uh, a theory of the false needs. प्रयोजन सब समय हमारे An autocratic and totalitarian environment. Totalitarian means akna or tantric. Jikane a consumer society, a capitalist society, shomus to social order ke control korbe. Long tumi ekta particular product ke happiness evang success bolu thore nebe. Tar bechore chhutbe. So this is uh, quite important because this is uh, Adorno's philosophy of music. Adorno himself wrote a book called Philosophy of Modern Music. he was himself as i've already mentioned was a classical pianist and he hated uh, jazz music uh, more than anything else in the world perhaps more than capitalism and he argued that radical art and music may preserve the truth by capturing the reality of the human suffering and uh, in this doctrine the philosophy of modern music he wrote against popular music because it has become part of the culture industry of advanced capitalist society and it promotes false consciousness to quote him musical language is polarized uh one second musical language is polarized according to its extreme towards gestures of shock resembling bodily convulsions on the one hand and on the other towards the crystalline stand still of a human being whom anxiety causes to freeze in her tracks so according to him a musical language has changed a lot either it's uh, uh, it, it, almost a representation of the convulsions on the stage for example in the case of the jazz and the rock music uddam nacha nachi korche othoba almost uh, they are uh, achieving some form of nirvana stand stillness inside the stage so i don't know is criticizing both the form he sees that modern music sees absolute oblivion as its goal it is the surviving message of despair from the shipwrecked 
so he criticized the jazz and the popular music uh, scathingly it's a virulent criticism on the part of i don't know in his book the philosophy of modern music published in 1949 another very important book published in 1966 it is called negative dialectics by the philosopher theodore adorno now let us first understand i have already talked about the conception of the dialectics as put forward by g w f hegel for hegel the dialectic was a process of realization that things contain their own negation and through this realization the parts are subletted into something greater and it gives birth to the uh, uh, the synthesis to a greater society but adorno's dialectics rejected this positive element wherein the result was something greater than the parts that preceded and are good for a dialectics which produce something essentially negative and adorno said that the present culture is full of this negative vibes and hence he said negative dialectics so but he at the same time also said that this negative dialectics uh, is uh, a phrase that flouts tradition as early as plato dialectics meant to achieve something positive by means of negation the thought figure the negation of the negation later become a uh, very sassing term so this book seeks to free dialectics from such affirmative traits without reducing its determinacy he said that this negative dialectics in which all aesthetic topics are shunned might be called an anti system so he said this negative dialectics is essential in order to reject all forms of negativity from the society amra jodi pop music ke reject korte chai amra jodi jazz music ke reject korte chai tahole a negative dialectics na bola negation of the negation is dorkar because because the pop music and the jazz music are already negative objects according to tw adorn so max horkheimer uh, uh, and harbert marcuse are also two very important thinkers of this frankfurt school i will discuss about them in the next lecture frankfurt school is a very important school in the history of the post marxist thinking and hence i will uh, deliver another lecture uh, i'll devote another lecture on uh, the frankfurt school uh, uh, i'm ending this lecture here thank you for your tremendous patience uh, i do thank all my students who are listening to this lecture so see you in the next lecture on the second part of the frankfurt school where i will discuss harbert marcuse uh, his conception of repressive disublimation and max or kemer eugen hebermas and of course walter benjamin one of the greatest thinkers of modernism i guess i will move into uh, then into from benjamin i will move into uh, louis althusser uh, in my next lecture so thank you